what I learned about Hanson art and framing is, well, one, it's a frame shop that's been serving the greater Houston area for 25 years. And 35, 35. Yeah. <laughs> that was my new but, but if you can look around, I mean, it's gorgeous framing, so you know where to get that done, especially during this season. But also, what I find really interesting is it's a working gallery, and they support local artists like my sister. So I think we're all really blessed and fortunate to be here and so grateful for you guys that you are supporting local artists in these trying and unprecedented times. <laughs> um, but anyway, without further ado, I'm Hildy Bowen, I'm Haley's twin, and I would like to introduce my sister Haley. Everything I'm about to say I already know, but for you guys that don't know, I think it's important that you hear. All the questions that I'm going to ask, I already know the answers to, but I think the answers are so interesting that it's worth you guys hearing them as well. But Haley Bowen is from originally Houston, Texas. We both are born here, but she was raised in Winter Park, Florida, along with me, my brother Jackson, and my mother. And that's where she got her primary schooling. But then from there, she went on to Parsons New School of Design and then finished her BA in studio art while also, and I was never this hardcore, double minored in a creative writing and art history minor from Rollins College. <laughs> And while well, also when she was there, she continued her education globally and visited the American University in Rome where she studied art and also played soccer, which I just learned yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was like, you played soccer in Rome? So hot. <laughs> to Florida, then to Rome, you made your way back to Houston. And in between, I think, is a really diverse and beautiful and inspiring story that I hope you guys can walk away from tonight feeling inspired after you hear it. So I'd like to begin at the beginning, which is where the Bible starts, and we should too. Um, <laughs> tell us, Haley, you know, you. I just said Houston, to Florida, to New York, back to Florida, to Houston. Where did your art start? Where did you find those first influences? Do you have artistic family members? Do you have a sister that might be kind of good at art, but isn't as good as you? <laughs> 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 but, but maybe sell on like a lower market. <laughs> 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 like it's broke. <laughs> um, you know, but I, but I, I was, you know, what, what is your background? How did you find art? It's such a specific thing to be a part of. She is a new figure artist. Um, we're going to get into a lot of what that means. You are already um, a resident at the silos at Sawyer Yards and now a local artist here. So tell us tell us about the beginning and how you got your start. Thank you for your question, Hilti. Um So we have very artistic family members in our family. My dad, my dad's super artistic actually. Dad was always a great drawer. And, um, but his dad, my grandfather, Jack Bowen, um, was a very prolific man in the oil and gas industry here in Houston, but he was also an amateur artist, and he was a water media artist, so watercolor was his, his main medium, um, but he also was a figure artist, and I say nude figure artist, and I always laugh because people are like, oh, so you, you paint nude. I'm like, no, I don't, I, I don't paint while I'm nude, but I'm a figurative artist that paints <laughs> people, so he was a figurative artist as well, and that's what I remember the most, because I love good landscape, but there's a more interesting landscape I find in the human body. And so my dad's side was super artistic, and then my mom's side, my grandmother, um, some of y'all in my family know Ganny, or my family friends know Ganny, my, my mom's mom. She was an artist as well in theater and in acting. So we had a very creative upbringing, and um, when I was, I remember being in preschool, and you probably remember this with dad, whenever I'd go, um, to school with him early, he would we would draw with him before mm -hmm. class, and then we come home with laminated pieces of paper of artwork, and that for me was like the validation that I craved. I think as a little kid, um, what I the I always say that I always joke that oval and stick figure horse is good. <laughs> so um, we had that, and of course my mother was very encouraging of my art career, and you know, being a single mom, she said no matter what our, our situation is, I'll always make sure that you have what you need to become an artist. So that was huge for me, and um, so I had that very encouraging household um, and family, and it was I was always inspired by my family. Um, and growing up in Florida, I took art classes outside of school. I would blow through canvases at 
this program called Retta's Art Program, and I'd go after school, and she'd say I had to slow down, but I just, I guess I couldn't stop painting bald eagles and gold retrievers. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, very encouraged to study art and, and move forward with art, and um, and you know, I'd always, and I had always envisioned being in New York, and I always thought it's either New York or LA for me, because Hilti's in LA, and and I guess I'll be in New York. So I went to Parsons um, for a year, which was great. I loved Parsons, but. I was a Catholic girl and went over to Florida, a super small town, and New York was too much. It was, I got caught up in going out and I made all A's, but I did get caught up in going out and I said, you know, I think I'm not mature enough to be in New York. And so I left New York and um, I went back to Florida where I graduated at Rollins studying studio art. Um, and I was on my way to LA and I stopped in Houston and I said, Houston's got something. Houston's got a really diverse art community and a lot of different artists doing a lot of different things and you can be whatever you want to be here and you don't feel like you have to compete with other people. So I stayed in Houston and I became a tenant artist at the Silos, which is, if you all been to the Silos, it's a really, really neat part of Houston. It's in the art hub of Houston and um, I've been so fortunate to have my studio there. So I'm staying in Houston. I love Houston, but that's a little bit about kind of how I ended up here. But I had every effort to go out to LA with you. There's plenty of me out there with you. Maybe being well, your roommate. I am now here with you. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way that can be humble. Um, uh, but okay, so it's, I, I love that you brought up Houston specifically as an artist because that's questions that I want to get into. But I think before we get into that, I am curious for everyone here to learn why the nude figure? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know if when people think of art, it's the first thing that you think of, but it is such a classic form. It's it's taught in every art school. Yeah. It's the basics. And, and what drew you specifically to that, and why now, as an artist, do you think it's significant enough for you to shape your entire career around it? Um, I think that's a really good question. I think having grown up with figure art around me, it wasn't something that I... I guess I never had the opportunity to question if it was like normal or not. You know, my grandfather, like I mentioned, we'd go to his uh, his condo here in Houston, and he had a hallway of all nude women, and and I don't know if there was men in there too, but I think it was all nude women, and Mom never never shunned us from that. You know, she's like, this is art, and your grandfather's a good artist, and it's respected, and so I, it's interesting because I've done a lot of different art in my in my education. I've done. I've dabbled in abstract, I've dabbled in landscape, um, but I kept coming back to the figure, and that was something that I never thought um, I would end up doing. You know, when you're in school, they're like, okay, what are you going to do? What's your purpose? What's your, what's your goal? What do you want to do with your art? And I think in Parsons, I had no idea, and so that's maybe why I was like, I just I can't be here right now. Um, but I, it was something I always fell back on because it was something I felt comfortable in, and probably being from a conservative household, I felt this desire to change the narrative of nudity and that I can be a figurative artist and it doesn't have to be inappropriate. I don't know if you remember this, but in high school, I was in, I was in a senior art show and I painted, can, if you can only imagine, a composition with one male nude figure and three women like all over him. And it was in the senior art show at Bishop Moore Catholic High School. <laughs> and, the, and I get a call over the intercom. Hey, the boy, this is uh, Principal Principal Doyle. Could you please report to your principal's office? And I was like, oh, that's weird. And he's being like extra credit for something. And he had my painting in his office, and he was like this. And I was like, well, maybe he bought my painting. Because <laughs> so he realized we can't put this in the show. I'm like, why can't we put it in the show? There's, there, it's just bodies. So. It's, it's, I have this desire to pump out the figure because we're all nude under our clothes and we're all, we've all seen ourselves nude and we've all been around, you know, either ourselves or other nude people and being nude is normal and I think that's been this like vocation whether I knew it or not when I was younger but now it's can I paint a story with, with figures and nudity and now more than ever I think with the call for, you know, inclusiveness and, and a, being equal across the board of, of whatever shape, whatever color, whatever size, whatever gender, whatever religion you are, nudity is what we all know. So I think 
that's why it's so important for me now. And I hope that that answered your question because that was a lot. Well, it did, and I actually want to jump in on a little bit on a question that I was going to ask later. But um, Haley has just introduced her latest endeavor, which, if you've been following her, is the Empowered Portrait. So it's for lack of a better word, a, a platform, so to speak, right? right? Where where anyone, if they are interested in having a nude drawing of themselves, can connect with Haley, and you guys go through a discussion and, and mm -hmm. kind of have a, a meeting of the mind, and and you can provide that for them. So I, I would love for you, having just discussed why the nude, um, especially because this is your next endeavor, introduce that and and the significance of now that nude, where it is, it is more personalized, it's not just spec work, it's not taken from a photograph that you found in a book. You're now individualizing your art yeah. to personality and to soul. And so I, I would love for you to dig into that. About the Empowered Portrait. Mm -hmm. So that for me was, um, I guess once I realized I wanted to be a figurative artist, I said, okay, you, you gotta kind of decide at some point in your life. like. If you're going to be an artist, what are you going to do that's going to carry on throughout your career? What are you going to do that's going to pump you into the future and be, be with you? What will be sustainable for you? So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to choose the figure because that's, that's what I keep coming back to, and I think there's something there. But once I chose the figure, I had to develop myself here in Houston. So I wanted people to know that I was not only a figurative artist, but that I focused on this narrative through line work. And um, and as people, specifically women, would come into my studio, they, they were like, this speaks to me. There's something about this that I felt this before. And, and so that was something I thought was interesting. I said, okay, my, my figure work isn't just changing my narrative. It's speaking to other women. And men, I appreciate you too. I love men. <laughs> I've drawn men before, and I love my first She's model married ever. To married to a man, Michael. <laughs> my first model ever was a 65 year old man, so I appreciate. But, um, so I noticed that women were, a lot of women were speaking about other female nudes, which I thought was huge. I thought that was, I just hadn't ever expected that. And so the Empowered Portrait came to be because in the season of my life with COVID, this was terrifying as an artist. I was like, oh my God, Michael, I'm, I'm going to have to, uh, we're leaving the silos and I'm going to move into the garage. And, you know, that was a scary time for us. And, but a lot of people use this year to self-reflect. And they said, you know, this has been a year where I've had to be still, I've had to pause, and I've had to look at myself and make changes, or look at myself and move forward, or you know, erase everything and start over. And a lot of people came, came forward to me, and they wanted a representation of the, the you, who you are, or the they who they were in a certain moment in their life through portraiture. And they said, look, you're an artist. You've drawn women in your studio before. And would you be able to do something like this? And can we keep it safe? And how can we do this? And I think it was because I had so many women coming to me. And super backstory, side note, I used to be a full-time yoga instructor and a health coach. So I've been in situations where it's been like a therapy session. So I know how to handle this ground. And they come to my space and say, there's just something that feels safe here, and maybe being a woman myself, but the Empowered Portrait, a lot of women, there, I've had women come in who've had a huge weight loss, a women who've gone through a divorce, who've just changed their marriage and want to restate their marriage, and lots of big things have happened, and they want to represent it through art. And so I said, you know what? This is really empowering, and it's empowering for me as a female, and it's empowering for other women too, and I want to be a voice for women through nude portraiture. What a taboo to talk about. So, and instead of you being the muse that I can objectify, you can be the voice of the story. And it's your story, and I'm here for it. And in the session, we, we talk a little bit before, whether it's a phone call if you're more comfortable, or coming in to get a little bit about your goal. And then, and then the session happens, and it's so organic. And everything that happens in the studio happens in the artwork too, which makes it really interesting. So I think that Empowered Portrait has completely been a vocation for me and a part of my purpose, if that answered your question. <laughs> well, and it did. And, and I haven't um, had an Empowered Portrait yet. I've drawn your face, though. You have. Um, some of my face might be on here. I don't think so. Um, but, but I can only imagine that that process is 
not only incredibly vulnerable, but also validating in a lot of ways. I think yeah. as women, body image, self-loathing, I mean, these are things that we struggle with all the time. And to have someone recognize the parts of you that are beautiful that you might not have even seen of yourself is, is one of the most powerful things that can happen. And, and I'd love for you to talk about the validation and, and the confidence. You know, it's, it's not enough to just go there and want a piece of art. I, how does that affect someone? How does that affect you? I think when I first started drawing figures, I only had myself as a model. So a lot of the women up here aren't me, but a lot of them are me. And, I, and what that required of me was being still and look, looking at myself, which is something a lot of us don't want to do. I don't want to look at that side thigh today, not today. You know, I don't want to look at this thing under my arm, whatever it is. And it made me stop, and I couldn't lie. I couldn't lie about what I was seeing. I couldn't lie about what I was drawing. I had to be truthful. Mm -hmm. So that, in me personally, instilled a confidence and a self-worth that I had lost. I had lost in college. And you know, when you're discovering yourself and you're finding validation in other ways, and I've mentioned to you before, a lot of that for me was through men. And I found my validation in relationships. And it wasn't until I came here, I started studying myself, that I I said, wow, I, I'm okay being who I am, and I'm okay looking how I look. And so with that, when I felt more confident with my self-portrait, I felt more confident with my work, and women came in, and yeah, I mean, there's been, there's been drawing sessions where it's taken an hour and a half for someone to take their clothes off. And I don't ever rush anybody. You know, it's your timing. If you come in, we all know that we're going to be nude at one point. Okay, we all know that the clothes are going to have to come off. But I am going to nurture you and take care of you and let you know that this is a safe space. And when you're ready, I'm ready. And so I have, when, when women come in, it's all set up already. The platform is already there. The drawing table is already ready. And we just talk. And we talk about, you know, what's, what's the deal? Like, what's the goal today? Um, and that, I think just, just being, I think the fear is, is, I'm about to be nude. I'm about to take my clothes off. And I think coming into a space and, and just feeling like this is normal, this is okay, has, is what makes it so, um, so validating. That, that for me as an artist, I'm not judging you. Because you're, you at this point in my mind, are a mixture of shapes and lines and energy, and I'm just supposed to take you and your life story and move you to a flat plane. So I'm not interested in how you're different from me, I'm interested in how you're going to be represented on a flat plane. And that's, I think, what makes it so less about, so not about how you look, but it's more about what we experience together. Well, and in talking about taking someone in their essence and putting it on a flat plane, can you get into your style yeah. and your expression, specifically what sets you, what your figures, what sets you apart with your figures, yeah. considering you know, that there's so many artists out there? So whenever anyone asks me about my style, I always start with in art school. I had this teacher who will remain nameless, so help me God, please. <laughs> <laughs> but and she was like, if you're going to be a successful artist, you have to know how to draw, and let me tell you how to draw. Which I, I respect, it's art school. Like, that's what I'm there to learn. But I had, I, I've drawn new figures since I was 14, and mom even remembers signing a parent consent form to get me into these drawing sessions with a bunch of, like, 40 plus year olds. So, um, the question was my style. So, <laughs> art school, and the, one of the drawing exercises was um, tilting, it's called tilting. So you take the pencil, and you hold the pencil to show the angles. And it's just like a lot of all these like lines coming out of a person. And I was like, I'm not gonna do the tilting deal. I'm gonna draw the figure in my style and erase all the lines and then add all the tilting lines. <laughs> so I kind of did it backwards. And the teacher's walking around and she was so intimidating. <laughs> Looking back, I'm like, she's not that intimidating. She, she did was. illustrate the Chronicles of Narnia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 intimidating. It was super intimidating. And so she looked and she said, uh, I'm gonna talk to you after class. And I was like, oh, she loves my work. She's talking to me after class. <laughs> I was like, this is great. And I'm all like, you know, high and mighty. And maybe she said, thought this time she also wanted to buy your work. I thought maybe she wanted to buy my work. Maybe that's fine. So she said, I know that you cheated. 
was like, cheated. She said, I know it's hard for you to let go of this style that you've brought to Parsons, but in order to become a better artist, you have to be stripped down and build back up again. Like, this is okay, like, <laughs> bring in the style. So it was at that moment that I think I challenged the idea of changing to, to be better which I love that idea. I do change to be better, but I'm talking about style. And I said, you know, I'm going to keep all the lines. So the, because the lines are the blueprint of of how I take how I draw you and put you to another surface. That's how I did it. So that movement, like it's this thing called happenstance. It's the space between you and the piece, and it's it's like a dance. It's like if you've seen people drawing before, they're like this, and there's no there's there's no stillness. It's like an um, orchestra conductor with their baton. It's called happenstance, and that's something I want to capture because that line work, it's so chaotic, but eventually you find a figure because it's so chaotic to capture a human being and put them on a flat surface, which made, I think, this style so unique um, and so moving. Whenever anyone sees my work, they said there's a lot of movement, there's a lot of lyricism, there's a lot of fluidity. And that's what I want you to feel. So that's, I think, that style for me is, this is something, this is how I draw, and I'm just gonna put out what I know, and what I'm comfortable with, and what I'm confident in, and move forward with that. Well, and can you, before you had mentioned COVID, and, and I think, you know, it's, it's prevalent, it's there, it's interesting to bring up, but how, how specifically did that affect not only your, your maybe not your style, but just your your work as an artist, especially because you are a small business owner, so to speak. And, yeah. and I would love for you to get into that and, and what it's like to be a working artist right now where you enter COVID and you automatically think there's going to be a deficit. No one yeah. is going to see a significance in art when people are struggling just to keep their homes above their heads. Yeah. So can you kind of talk just how that, what 2020 brought to your own art, did it change it? Did your work evolve at all? Yeah, completely. And that's a great question because I think we all kind of feel chills about 2020. <laughs> you know, we feel like, oh, that hurt. 2020 so far has been a year where I am realizing that I have to be an artist in 2020. Mm -hmm. And I need to speak up in 2020. And I think being there's so much fear being a small business owner because everything you know goes back into your business and if your business fails, you fail because you care so much. It's, it's everything I know has gone into this business. And um, I, like I was saying earlier, I mean, I, I have a studio in the silos and I, in June, I, have, I couldn't pay rent. I was terrified. I was like, I can't, I can't. Like, I don't have, I'm not paying commissions. There was like kind of a lull. And I said, if I lose my studio, I lose my sacred space, and I can't invite a woman into my garage and feel good about it, because I was going to convert my garage to a studio. So I was like, okay, what can I do in this year to, to still be important? To Not that I needed to be important, but to still say something. And in 2020, we've all been through the ringer with our, this health crisis, with social injustice, with the election with the future of our lives. And as an artist who paints figures, I've used the figure as a way to speak about our experience. And it's self-portraiture, but it's also saying to women, I can still do this, and I can do this in a safe way, and I can draw you and help you tell your story. But I can also be an artist and, and speak up about, yeah, it's super important to be a woman right now. And to, hide, and to not hide any parts of my being. And the one thing that's been frustrating is being censored in 2020, when it's all about pumping out nudity as normal and, and, and being equal across the board. And so that's been hard for me um, in a way, the censorship, but it's, it's still pumping out work that, um, to me, I think is global. And I think because I'm not straying away from any type of body, it's if that's answering your question. Yeah, well, and, and I think looking at your work and considering 2020 where diversity and inclusiveness are at the forefront, I think women have a louder voice than they ever have while also pushing up against bigger, 
barriers in ways that they think they've had, never had before. Uh, what is your response to the climate of 2020 through your art? Is, is it even possible to adequately address the climate of diversity and inclusiveness through a new figure? It is. I had to stray away from using myself. I had to, I had to start being okay with, I had, up until before 2020, I hadn't invited a lot of models in. I was too scared. I was like, oh my gosh, like, this is so Jack and Rose from the Titanic. Like, this would be what that would be. That sounds <laughs> and I said, I have to, if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to, if I'm going to be a female who, who paints females, then, then I have to do this. And so there was a part of me that had to get uncomfortable. Just like other women get uncomfortable when they're coming into my space knowing that they're going to be nude in 20 to 30 minutes. There was a part of me that had to get uncomfortable in order to, to say, look, I'm not just doing this to show off what I look like with my clothes off. I'm doing this to show you that, that all women can have a story through their bodies. And, and it kind of goes back to my style because through the line work, that's where the narrative comes from. And, um, but I think that's, to answer your question, it's, it's really putting myself out there. Like, doing an art talk tonight, she's the actress, I'm the artist. Like this is this is a lot for me to come out here and, and speak in front of a large group of people, but I want women to know and, and people to know that that we all deserve to have our story told. And no matter what your situation is or your past or or what it is that you look like or believe in, you are just as important as the person next to you. And that to me is what I can do through my art. And so it's it's reaching out to other, I've reached out to models. That's like, I've had friends that I've drawn and and I'm looking at one friend that I've drawn. <laughs> and I've, I've reached out to another model, I'm like, is this creepy? <laughs> and I, I, there was a, a girl that came in my studio the other day and I said, um, just point blank, I was like, can I draw you? And she was like, what? I'm like, I would love to draw you. I really would, I would actually really love to draw you. And so it's, it's getting out of my comfort zone to, to be more more welcoming for more women. Because I I love men, I love women, but I want women to know that um, this is for everybody. This is for all bodies. And Well, and, and getting into the specifics, I, I think learning these things about you is, is interesting, but you do use a lot of color in your work. You